When it comes to action choreography, the ending of the terrorist siege movie Who Dares Wins, also known as The Final Option, is one of the best ever put on film. Although it has a James Bond feel on account of the awesome music and the dramatics of camera work and editing, what actually happens in the sequence is much more believable than almost any other action sequence ever put on film. I'm not going to go through the entire sequence though because the basic principles of how to create a powerful and convincing action sequence are firmly established in a stunning moment that lasts less than 10 seconds but is packed with intelligent design. First of all let's lay out the basic combat scenario. Peter Skellen is an SAS officer who has infiltrated a terrorist group. The terrorists have seized a residence in which various powerful people have met up for a social gathering. The SAS are on their way to raid the building. A Skellen knows that the raid is coming and he knows precisely what time it's going to happen. And one of the biggest risks of the raid is that three trigger-happy terrorists who have a group of about 15 high-ranking men held hostage in a single room at a dining table, these three terrorists might execute the prisoners as the SAS raid begins. A Skellen's task is to be in the room and prevent those executions, but he doesn't have a weapon because the group didn't trust him enough to let him have one. So, an unarmed SAS infiltrator has to somehow take out three armed men. He has to do it on his own without getting killed and without a single hostage getting killed. The odds are stacked against him, aren't they? But he does have time to plan out his basic physical and psychological manoeuvres and he has the advantage that the three armed men don't yet see him as a direct threat. So think about that for a moment. What would you do? Pause the video for a moment and try and work out a plan of action and then we'll unpause and see what Skellen the professional does. All right, let's see how Skellen handles it. Here we go. And a quick cut to the exterior raid. Wow. Now what Skellen just did looks ultra cool, but if you take the time to break it down physically and logistically, it's much smarter than it initially appears. The three men are spaced far apart, so his initial attack can only be on one man and has to be unarmed. But the first man he attacks will be the least suspecting of the three, a small advantage. He also has to grab the gun quickly enough to be able to use it effectively, so his initial positioning is essential. He has to not only hit the first guy hard enough to prevent a wrestling match, but when he grabs the gun, he can't grab it in the wrong orientation. If he grabs it the wrong way round, it will then take him a second or two to adjust his hold so he can aim and fire. But the other two guys might have killed him by then. So approaching from this guy's left allows him to grab the gun at the best angle for immediate use. He starts with two hand moves at the same time. The fist slam into the neck with his right hand and simultaneously grabbing the gun with his left hand in the position that is required for aiming. It's then easy to put his right hand, the fist attack hand, onto the main handle to aim and shoot within a second. Now once he's got the gun, he has two targets who need to be eliminated quickly. Their reaction time will be slow in the first couple of seconds, so rather than shoot the nearest guy, the easier target, he aims from the shoulder to take out the furthest opponent. Let's call him terrorist number two. He has to hit terrorist two quickly because of his distance, but remember it's not just about killing the terrorists, he has to save the guests, and it's not going to do any good to accidentally shoot them himself. So this involves a calculated risk of drawing attention to himself by shouting for the guests to get down before he fires. It only requires them to duck their heads about maybe 8 inches to allow a clear shot of terrorist number 2, and I think he only fires 2 or 3 bullets at the most. No need to waste rounds. If he'd tried to shoot Terrorist 3 on the left first, he would have had a more guaranteed hit, but Terrorist number 2 would then be harder to shoot because he would kick into counterfire mode and would be a smaller target due to his distance. Due to the angle of the table, he also wouldn't be able to use the roll move to dodge the distant guy's counterfire. So altogether a very wise choice to go for an aimed shoulder shot at Terrorist number 2. Skellen has also fully anticipated terrorist number 3's physical reaction and accounted for it. Seeing Skellen fire to his left, he will obviously look left to see what Skellen is shooting at, and when he realises terrorist 2 has been shot, he will take just a second or two to fire back at where he still thinks Skellen is. But he's at a perceptual disadvantaged position because of his proximity in the middle of the room. 
he can't look at Scallon firing and what Scallon is shooting at at the same time. So being the terrorist number three is just a few metres away across the table, a forward roll moves Scallon far enough out of the reactive return fire, but he has to start that roll immediately after shooting terrorist two. And there's no need for time consuming aiming from the shoulder this time, rolling into a hip fire position against the guy just a few metres away guarantees impact. But there's another clever aspect to the forward roll. There was always the possibility that terrorist number one, who he hit in the neck, might not be stunned long enough to prevent him lunging back at Skellen and wrestling for the gun. So Skellen's forward roll both dodges the reactive fire from the left and gets him away from the first guy he hit in the neck. Far enough to return fire if the guy happens to be coming back at him. And wouldn't it have been funny if terrorist number one was getting back up and got accidentally shot by terrorist number three? However, the guy was still flawed from the neck hit, so Skellen, wasting not a second, can finish him off easily at close range and firing from the hip. Okay, so that's my little logistic breakdown. And by the way, I'm not an expert in firearms. I've never even fired a gun. So maybe a real SAS operative or gun expert would give a slightly different take on this scene. I've no doubt some of you will have observations to contribute, so fire away. But from a filmmaker's point of view, I consider this to be top tier action choreography for multiple reasons. First is that everything we see here is physically plausible. Skellen doesn't have the usual superhero-like ability to aim at and hit targets while he's leaping in the air or doing acrobatics or whatever. I hate that in movies, it's so cliched. That kind of thing usually pulls me out of an action sequence on account of its stupidity. And Skellen's not taking on 20 opponents all by himself. In reality, three is more than enough. And the reactions of the terrorists are believable. Not that they're given much time to react, of course. Three opponents, a fight lasting less than 10 seconds, and physically and logistically plausible choreography make this stunning little sequence believable. The only thing I consider to be a major threat to Skellen's intricate attack plan is that when he shouts for everyone to get down, perhaps one or even both of the remaining terrorists might have ducked in response as well, making them harder to hit and ensuring a messier shootout that would probably get some hostages killed. It's also possible that the guests themselves might not have ducked fast enough to allow a clear shot at terrorist number two, but no plan is perfect, and I don't consider the way this plans out to be unrealistic. I mean, the guests were on edge, afraid of being shot anyway, so their nervousness would likely cause a fast self-preservation reaction. It's actually very rare that I see a gunfight in an action movie that is convincing, even though I don't know much about guns. The human actions and reactions in movie gunfights hardly ever seem plausible, and that's what impressed me so much about this sequence. A lot of careful thought went into this little what, seven or eight second moment. And the choices of camera angles and the editing very clearly communicate what is happening, even though it happens at lightning speed. Another thing I like is that a lot of action movies try to impress by having long action sequences that last for like five minutes or longer. But I find short, intelligently thought out action is better, and they hardly ever happen as quickly as this one does. And another plus is that although the funky cool music leads into the action kickoff moment, the fight itself is unscored. There's enough going on here that I think music would be distracting, so wise choice to leave out the score. Given the SAS plot of the movie, it actually made me wonder if someone who is a real expert in military combat had choreographed this fight instead of one of the usual film industry choreographers. I think the answer may be in the final credits. Military advisors, anonymous. <laughs> That's like a joke, isn't it? Hey, nudge, nudge, some SAS guys have come in and advised the crew on how to portray the action. Given the rarity of realistic gunfights in movies, I'll bet they did just that. And if we're going to take a public relations view of the movie itself, this fictional portrayal would likely scare the crap out of a lot of real-world terrorists thinking of doing a siege. So yeah, from a film point of view, this little moment is a perfect example of how to choreograph an action scene. The physical manoeuvres and character reactions are believable, which is rare in movie action scenes, and yet it's just as dramatically powerful as any of the somersaulting, shoot wildly and hit all targets like you're in a circus action scenes. Actually, it's more dramatically powerful than those because it's believable. Oh, one other little thing here. When Skellen takes out these three, and the, the little action scene ends, 
there's a very strong emotional wow for the audience. I mean, I've seen this movie with other people, and upon seeing this scene for the first time, pretty much everyone is like, whoa, what the hell just happened there? That was cool. But as the scene ends, it cuts straight to two SAS guys hanging from a helicopter, firing either flash grenades or gas grenades into this window, and you get an explosion. Now, I think that explosion happening so quickly after this short action sequence, I think the explosion punctuates the emotional reaction of the audience to the moment when Skellen took these three out. It's a very nice little piece of editing, that. Okay, a little spoiler alert. If you haven't seen the movie and you want to enjoy it without knowing in advance the final outcome for the main characters, then probably skip the rest of this video and come back to it later. So one other little aspect of this whole siege battle that I want to mention is about the use of action choreography to communicate dramatic plot points. Here Skellen encounters a terrorist who still thinks he is on their side, but Skellen wipes him out with lightning reflexes. Tony, what's happening? It's a great moment because it shows Skellen's ruthless determination and total lack of empathy for the terrorists, even when they're being friendly, but it also sets up a comparison point for the moment when Skellen hesitates in shooting the lead terrorist. No hesitation here, and then both he and the lead terrorist hesitate. So that comparison between the two scenes, it's almost like a way of highlighting Skellen's lack of reaction. However, I do have one gripe about realism in this moment, and it's a common flaw in action movies. Apparently when people get shot in real life, it doesn't lift them off the ground, or knock them way back. Bullets either go through the person, or they just embed and the person drops to the floor. It's my only outstanding gripe in the ending choreography of this film. Oh, one other detail about this moment. The inclusion of a bunch of flowers is probably thematic, being that the movie's politics are strongly against the supposed flower power ideology of the terrorists. He fires through the flowers at a terrorist, and then the flower vase tips over. Now, although I'm not a hippie, I personally have some disagreements about the portrayal of nuclear disarmament proponents in this movie, but I don't consider the film an ideological threat either. To me, it's just an excellent spy thriller. It's like a James Bond movie, but more convincing. Great story, great characters, great performances. It's technically very well made and it's got a killer musical score. Judy Davis, one of my favourite actresses ever, is incredible as the lead terrorist and Lewis Collins in the lead role is so good that I wish he'd have been cast as James Bond at some point. He had the looks, the charm and the physique. He could have been an incredible Bond, but apparently his audition for the role didn't go so well. So there you go. Action choreography and who dares wins. If you have other classic action movie scenes you'd like me to cover, then drop your suggestions into the comments section. If you want to see my existing studies on other classic action movies like First Blood, The Terminator, The Warriors, among others, then head over to my site, collativelearning.com. Links to my Patreon and merchandise pages, as well as my Facebook and Twitter links, are in the video description. To finish off here, here's one last look at that superb action moment. Later, folks.